Well, good morning, friends, and thank you for joining us at Forsyth Church of Christ or a morning message here. Of course, you may be watching it at different times, and that's the value and the glory of the Internet, isn't it? But we're thankful that you are spending a few minutes with us. And I do want to mention uh, as we get started that we have a website at facoc.org. And at that website, there's a lot of ways for you to be in touch with us. There's a way to sign up for the uh, church bulletin that comes through email for texts that come from Forsyth. Um, for there's a place to give if you were so moved to give to help us in our mission here. And there's, uh, there are just ways to communicate information about our congregation. And so, especially if you're local, we would love for you to come and visit with us some Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and uh, get to know us. We'd like to get to know you. And it will be a, a wonderful thing if that could happen. But we're glad that you're with us, with us in this way today as we uh, have a different kind of lesson. It, and on campus, we are going to have some special guests and and going to be uh, sending off a, a team to Honduras uh, in a couple of days. We'll be praying for them. And so if you wouldn't mind praying for them as well, for their safety and for their effectiveness as they spend 10 days in Honduras uh, starting June the 1st. We have a great team going down there and a lot of great things happening. We're going to have a representative from the Renewal Center here in town to talk a little bit about uh, how they reach out to a disadvantaged population. And we're looking forward to hearing about that. So a lot of things kind of going along with this lesson that, uh, that won't be apparent on the video, but that are happening here uh, at Forsyth. And that's why we would really love for you to come and, and just check in and, and say hello and, and see what's happening here. But today our theme is the mission of mercy. The mission of mercy. Back in March, I sent our elders a, an email because I just was reading through some scriptures and it occurred to me uh, how important one scripture was in particular. And here's what I said in that email. I said, I've been contemplating what foresight has become over the past couple of years. Our church has really embraced a mission of mercy to the hurting around us, a very Jesus-like mission. And a verse caught my attention recently, a verse we all know, but it was just like a lighthouse in my mind as I read it. It says in Micah 6 and verse 8, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And that verse, uh, it stood out to me uh, as I continued in my writing to the elders, to love mercy. Now, what a meaningful phrase that is, to love mercy. And I'm, I wrote that I'm just captivated by that thought at this time. I'm so grateful to be on a mission of mercy. Healing and hope are being given out at our place every day of the week and is starting to visibly merge into the church family. And our challenge is not just to allow the mission of mercy to be available in our place, but to find avenues to be conduits of mercy in our own lives, to fully embrace the mission of mercy as we become more and more like Christ. And so I re had read that passage, uh, this, this Micah 6, 8. It's, a, it's well known. It's something we say a lot and think a lot. Uh, one brother told me that he prays it every day. But the idea of loving mercy, to be on a mission of, mer of mercy, those are some things that came to my mind when I started thinking about this idea of loving mercy. And, and one, of it is, one of them is to love mercy is to see the hurting. It's very easy to look away, isn't it? When someone's having a hard time or someone's struggling or, or uh, we come across someone who needs a little assistance. And it's, it's just the easiest and maybe most natural thing to, to look away. But Zechariah 7 and verse 9 says, This is what the Lord Almighty said, Administer true justice, show mercy, and compassion to one another. But it's, it's almost an ident identical <clears throat> message to the one in Micah 6 and verse 8. It's a, it, and in both of those, it's, it's not just an encouragement, it's an indictment. It's an encouragement in the sense that it's telling them, Hey, this is what God wants us to do, and it's not what you're doing. So here's what I want you to do. And so there's sort of a, uh, a push behind this, these words. And God's having to instruct them to move away from religious re rote practices, just things we do because they're religious, because they're right, and, and instead have a heart for the people 
around us. The word mercy is used 126 times in Scripture, and justice 130 times, and compassion 82 times. Those are our multiple references to those qualities that God wants us to have. And many of these are about the way God views us, the mercy He gives us, the justice, the compassion that He offers us. And so to love mercy means that we see the hurting and we want to act to bring relief. And however we do that individually is, is certainly up to you. It's a choice we make. We might work with organizations like the Renewal Center uh, or Meals on Wheels or any of the active uh, serving mechanisms that we can find in our church and in our community. I think also when we contribute to disaster relief organizations, we're, we're, giving, uh, we're giving help by virtue of helping those who are in the field helping others. <clears throat> we participate in church uh, mission trips like some in our church are going on this month. Or we can adopt a child through Compassion International, as uh, our, our friend Becky Solly talked to us about uh, last year and helped people uh, adopt a child in a foreign country. And so the truth is we all encounter various opportunities to see the hurting and to love mercy. And so one is, that's one of the first steps I think it is to love mercy is to be able to look around and see who's hurting, who needs help, who needs encouragement. And that, mean, and that also is important because to love mercy is to realize that without mercy, we cannot please God. Did you know that without mercy, you can't please God? Hosea 6 and verse 6, God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. And he's saying, you're doing all the right religious things, you're doing all the actions, but I, I really, what I desire is mercy. You know, Jesus reiterated this in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 13, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And loving mercy then isn't based on emotion. It doesn't mean that we have to feel something welling up within us so that we can finally show mercy to someone. It, it's a lot more than that. It's a choice that we make. And God asks us to make that choice. And He's calling us to a certain perspective and action in life, not just making sure we do all the outwardly religious things, not that those things don't matter, but things like church attendance and taking communion and prayer and Bible study, all of those things, should lead us to love mercy and not take the place of loving mercy. In other words, we can't say, I'm too busy studying my Bible to show mercy to someone. It, it doesn't make sense. Jesus said, I desire, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And so to love mercy is to realize without mercy, we, we can't please God. And to love mercy is to shine the light of the gospel in a dark world. There's a, a haunting, a verse in Proverbs, Proverbs 18, 23. It says, The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. No, I can see that in the world today, can't you? Anytime that someone expresses a need or, or something that's uh, hurtful or hard, uh, they get pounded by the world around them. We live in a dark world. The world's a dark place. And although there are places where mercy flows freely, oftentimes, it's in short supply. Have you ever seen some of those videos where someone asks for help and, and gets a lot of negative responses? You know, somebody will say, hey, can you give me a dollar? Or do you have any food? Or do you have any money that I can have? And, and people really lay into them, you know. And, and then finally, somebody helps them. And a person says, I was just looking for someone who had the, the heart to help someone else. And so I'm going to give you $500 because you helped me. And it was sort of a setup. And, and, you know, maybe it's an Internet thing. Maybe it's they're just looking for clicks and maybe they're just doing it for popularity or whatever. But, but it does show that <clears throat> people are not always merciful. And, and, they're, and they're those who don't seek a reward for it. They just, they just want to, to help. And so uh, there was a, one of those, especially I, was, I watched <clears throat> this week. Excuse me. <clears throat> I watched this week, but a man comes into a, a donut shop and he asks for a donut and, and says, you know, I don't have any money and I, I just, I'm hungry and can I have a donut? And there's a little boy and his mother working there. And the little boy says, sure, what, what do you want? 
And the guy says, well, I'll wash some dishes or sweep the floor, or do something for you. And, and the mom comes around the corner and she says, oh, no, no, you just pick out what you want. And he says, for nothing? And they said, yes. And then he said, well, because you were so kind, I have $500 to give you. And he hands over $500. And uh, she explained that in tears that this was a new business and that people came in hungry and she didn't believe she should turn them away. And so this is not the first time she'd given some food away. Um, and so I think about this idea of, of having the spirit of mercy. And Christianity should mean that mercy is more common in the world around us. Mercy, Christianity should mean that, that mercy is more common. And the more Christians there are, the more mercy there ought to be seen in this dark world. And to love mercy is something that we seek from God. Honestly, when we think about mercy and offering mercy to other people, we, we sometimes maybe come up with excuses or we bristle a little bit about, you know, what, you know who needs mercy and why do they need it? And they have all these, uh, these objections that come to mind sometimes. And, and you know, uh, what we need to think about is what do we see when we look in the mirror? We, need, we see a person who needs the mercy of God who depends on the mercy of God. And, and so Psalm 51 and verse 1, that great psalm that of, of renewal and recommitment that David offers to, to the Lord uh, after his sin with Bathsheba and how all that played out. And he starts off that psalm with, Have mercy on me, God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. And, you know, when I think about that, that's a, that's a prayer we can all pray because we all have sinned. We all have short, fallen short of God's glory. We all uh, struggle in life, and we all need God's mercy. Titus chapter 3 expresses it this way. It says, When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. Who, whom He poured out on us generously through this Jesus Christ, our Savior. And when I think about the mercy of God and how through His mercy and grace He saved us, two words come to mind. And one word is undeserved. The mercy of God is according to His unfailing love and great compassion. It's not according to our great works or our great love. And that means the, the second word, unearned. It's undeserved and it's unearned. And that's, a great, that's great news for all of us. And so uh, Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5, because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It's by grace you've been saved. And so it's the great mercy of God that is so important to us, and that's what we seek from Him. And if we're continually seeking mercy from God, we ought to be people who also give mercy to other people. And that makes really mercy a matter of prayer. In Daniel chapter 9 and verse 18, Daniel prayed, Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. And so the request that Daniel makes in this, and Daniel has so many great prayers in, his, in the book of Daniel, but is, is based on the mercy of God, not on what is deserved. You know, I don't want what I deserve, to be honest. What we deserve is, is not, not great. But mercy is often defined as what is the withholding of what we deserve. And that might not be the total definition of mercy, but it's part of it. This idea that God withholds from us what we really deserve because He's merciful. There's a statement in Luke 18, 13 that's part of a story that Jesus tells. The tax collector stood at a distance and he would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And it's a familiar story. It has a protagonist. It's, it's got uh, this, 
a self-righteous Pharisee who only thanks God because he's not like the tax collector. He's not like other sinners. He's, he's not like the sinner that's nearby. And he talks about his good works and how wonderful he is. And, and, and the sinful tax collector can only say, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And this is a rendition of a famous prayer that goes around called the Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's a prayer I can pray. And it's a prayer we all need to pray because we are all sinners. In Hebrews 4.16, the scripture says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence that we may receive mercy and find grace and help us in our time of need. So it, to love mercy is a matter of prayer. And to love mercy is to receive mercy. Going back to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And doesn't this demonstrate how important mercy is to our Lord? Uh, we're going to have a class on the Beatitudes starting in uh, a couple of weeks, and Jim McConnell is going to teach that, and, and I'm look forward, looking forward to that so much because I, need, I think that the Beatitudes and exploring them will help us to grow in Christ. Giving and receiving mercy are interlinked and inseparable. Jesus taught it was one of the most important matters of our faith. In talking to the Pharisees in Matthew 23, and pardon my gravelly voice, in Matthew 23, 23, uh, Jesus said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. And you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. And so he says one of the most important things you should have been practicing is mercy. James, the Lord's brother, said mercy triumphs over judgment. And so I think we need to look around in our life and see that there are many opportunities for mercy that can be found in our neighborhoods and in our city and in our world. And I'm grateful we have examples of, of showing mercy in Scripture. And if we look around in our churches, we see people who are very merciful. And we have great examples of people living it out in their life. So each of us should examine our attitudes and our lives to make sure and to make, make room for mercy, either as an increase, something we're already doing, but we want to increase that, or something that's a new beginning. We maybe haven't focused on mercy and we'd like to. So that's an encouragement, encouraging words to you about, about mercy and the mission of mercy that all Christians should be on. Let me pray for you and then we will uh, close out. Lord, thank you for the word mercy. Thank you for your great mercy for us. I pray, Father, that each person listening to this right now will receive your mercy, will seek it out, will not only allow you to have mercy on them, but also fill them with mercy toward others and help us all to be more merciful people. And thank you for your scriptures that remind us of this powerful perspective of life. And it calls us to a powerful action in life. So help us, Father, to do that. I pray for your great blessing on all of us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. And again, thank you for spending this time with us today. And, um, and we uh, encourage you to visit facoc.org. But more, we encourage you to visit Forsyth Church of Christ, 10 o'clock Sunday mornings. All right, thanks. Have a great day.